G'day fellas. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new build order that I've been working on for the Inca. The Inca are an incredibly versatile civilization, but their strength really comes from the power of their boom, especially from their canches. So we're going to be trying to utilize those as best as we can. So the build order that we're going to be doing is going to be a Chimu FF. So the Chimu FF, it's weak against early aggression. So I've played this uh, strategy on the ladder uh, probably for about between 10 and 15 games now. I've had mixed success with it. Uh, I've probably won about two thirds of my game and lost about uh, one third of my games. Uh, I played some quite high ranked people, uh, including Give You Anxiety. I think he's top 30 at the moment. The person that I'm playing against at the moment is top 50. Uh, so they're playing the Chinese civilization. So I can expect that they're going to be doing some sort of fast fortress, which means that I'm going to be able to, in the early game, have a bit of freedom uh, with my boom. So just repeating once again, against early aggression, it's it's a weak build uh, simply because the shipments that we're going to be shipping are not shipments that are going to be helping us in the early game against any form of aggression. So if you do scout aggression, it means that you will need to change your build order. You'll need to prepare for that. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're looking for food treasures. The food treasures are the most important part because they're going to help us meet our age up time. We're hoping to age up at about 4 minutes 35, but we can't always meet that. We're using the big button tech from our house, our cancha house. So it costs 180 food, wood and coin, and we're going to be hitting that and that's going to give us four settlers. So once that arrives, our economy is going to be looking pretty hot. The first shipment that we send, we're going to be sending 300 wood. Now it's okay if you send 300 wood a little bit late, uh, simply because you're not going to be picking it up until you've started aging up. So it's, it's not a big deal if you don't pick it up straight away. Uh, so just a, a minor note, making some mistakes here just with my hunt. I should be herding this hunt, even though I'm heavily on coin in the beginning of the game. It's still important to try and herd my hunts. In the definitive edition, hunts no are notorious. They just run away from you. So it's important that you do try and herd them, get them in early, even if it means slowing down your build a little bit, because the consequence of, of doing that is that now all of my subsequent villages are going to be delayed because they've got to run all the way out to these new hunts instead of being right underneath the town center. So in the short run, I might have saved myself some time, but in the long run, I haven't. So we had a look at the Chinese deck there. It looks like a pretty standard uh, Chinese deck. The main thing I'm looking out for is industrial cards. Uh, playing this strategy on the ladder, I've been up against a fast industrial a couple of times. Uh, it, it definitely appears to be that we're heading into a greed meta where people are trying to be as greedy as possible, and this is taking advantage of that. So the idea is that we want to be hitting the Fortress Age at around 8 minutes with all 13 of our canches. Once we get to the Fortress Age, we're going to start spamming Chimu Runners. We're going to go fully upgraded on our Chimu Runners, like absolutely completely upgraded. So we're going to get the Elite upgrade. We're going to get the Melee Combat upgrade, which gives us 15% health and 15% damage. And we're also going to be getting the Chimu Support upgrade, which gives a further, I think it's 15% health. So aging up here with the Chief, the Chief's going to provide us uh, two uh, Travoy. Uh, the Travoy, when we age up, they're going to be uh, transformed into War Huts, which are going to be used for defense as well as for training Chimus. If you only put one of them into a war hut and one of them into a trading post, you're going to have an excess of resources. So if, if that's something, if you if you do like doing that, instead of aging up with 13 uh, cancer houses, you can potentially age up with about 10. That way you don't have that excess of resources built up. Now, I've been testing with my cancer houses whether I should be walling with them or whether I should just be placing them you know, a, a little bit more like how I'm putting them in this video. And I found mixed results with it. The main problem that I've found is that if I put a wall in like a in a semicircle around my base, that the consequence is that it often affects me more than it affects the enemy. It means the enemy can't hit me or or come in and, and push on me, but it means that my units are delayed from coming out. It means that there's pathing issues. Often my, my settlers get bugged around the coin mine. And it's I've just found it's quite difficult. So in this game, I've opted uh, to spread out my houses a little bit further which means that I'm more susceptible to enemy raids or enemy pushes, but it's a consequence I'm I'm willing to, to take. So normally when uh, my Travois come out, I'm going to be placing them on my coin mines. Now, because both of my coin mines are in the top position, so these are the best positions for coin mines, I'm not putting my, my war huts on top of them. I'm putting my war huts a little bit more 
uh, offensively towards the front. So the first shipment that comes in is the Chicha Brewing. This is going to increase the gather rate for our our Cancha uh, houses from uh, 0.5 to 1.0. Um, and we're maintaining villager production. And then every time we're hitting 135 wood, we're just dropping down a new Cancha house. So now that our third shipment's come in, we're going to be shipping 700 coin. I've tried my best to optimize this build. I've tried it with 600 wood and I've tried it going 600 wood and then Chicha Brewing and Chicha Brewing then 600 wood. And I found that this is the best build. It's a little bit slower and makes you a little bit more vulnerable, uh, but you do save a shipment by not going the 600 wood. And it, it's really something that you don't need. So in the early game, we're, we're looking for those food treasures, but once we've aged up, we're looking for wood treasures. You can see that we're, we're completely on wood here. We've got 18 settlers, 17 are on wood. One of them is building the Cancha house. The enemy comes in here. He's looking looking to scout out what we're doing, but we are going to deny him just by having the war huts there. So if he was able to scout our 700 coin, he'd probably be a lot more comfortable going for a fast industrial, but he really doesn't have any idea what we're doing. All he sees is some Cancha houses, some war huts. So he doesn't know whether we're massing units here. When you're moving into the transition into the fortress age, do not be afraid to gather up extra coin. Now that Chimu Runners cost coin, it means that you can have an excess of coin and you don't need to be worried about building up that excess. Previously, it meant that, you know, because the Chimu Runners cost, cost wood, that you would avoid overgathering, but now it's really not a big issue. So I, I will often, so now that I've got all 13 canches going up, or all 13 canches building, I am completely on food and coin. I'm, I'm splitting them about half and half. Realistically, I, I try and keep more on coin just because I want to be aiming for that, uh, the Chimu support. The Chimu support is a thousand coin, but it provides a huge amount of Chimus and it gives them that health upgrade. So our opponents aged up. It's a pretty standard time for a Chinese fast fortress. Normally you'd expect to see it between seven and seven minutes 30. So we know that he's quite a good player. Uh, as, as I said earlier, he, this guy is top 50. Um, so he's he's quite uh, quite good and we're heading up straight up behind him So we're gonna be taking the messenger which is gonna give us our age up Hopefully at about eight minutes and in transition what we're doing is we're moving everybody off food And we're gonna be heading over to wood with we, we want to gather 300 wood with that wood We're gonna be getting the elite chimu upgrade and we're gonna be getting a market and the market is going to be used because we're going to have such an influx of food from our 13 canches that we're going to be selling our food so that we can reach our 1000 coin faster. When it comes to hitting that 1000 coin, it's not something that we're necessarily rushing. It's something that we need to do when we're comfortable with. So sometimes it will be my second shipment in Fortress Age. Sometimes it will be my fifth shipment in Fortress Age. It's just important that you do it when you're comfortable and when you've got your mass built up and that you're actually going to be gaining something from it. So we see the enemy begin to pushing in here. This is a, a Chinese strategy that I haven't actually seen for a while. So it's the Petard Rush. He's got quite a huge force. Uh, and so the first thing I'm doing is just trying to target the Petards. I get in there nice and close. I want to kill at least two Petards. If I can kill two Petards, it means I probably won't lose my TC. But unfortunately, they do path through my Chimu Runners. I try my best to take them out, but all f but four of them get there. And so it means just a little bit of damage from the other units and my TC goes down. So with that, my opponents gained 600 experience, oh, sorry, 200 experience and a full shipment. So I've decided to ship nine Chimus. Normally I'd be going for the Chimu attack and Chimu HP, but because I saw the attack coming in, I said, you know what? I'm going to need extra Chimus, extra units. And bringing the war chief in, this was a, a pretty big mistake for me. I should have had this war chief underneath my town center at the time. He, he's a huge tank. He's got lots of HP. He's very annoying for the enemies. But nonetheless, we're still able to clear out the enemy, enemy relatively well. We've lost our town center. But really, we haven't been set that far behind. Because all it means now is that we're all in. By him taking out our town center, it, it just means that we're not even going to be building villages. We don't have to worry. He doesn't have to worry. We're just going to be coming at him hard. And so that's exactly what we do. So we've got the Chimu attack and HP that just comes in. Uh, we're researching our elite Chimu runners. And at this point, we're just careful to avoid losing units. We're going to at attempt to run him around the map. So we just want to be hitting his, his villages. I haven't done a very good job of scouting where his hunts are. 
but because he's got musketeers on the field, it means that I decide to ship uh, the bows. Just because when you're up against muskets in melee mode, they're going to be doing a lot of damage. So I, I spot some of his, his troops here. Uh, he does start, try to fight me, but just with a little bit of micro, able to sort of out, outpace him. And we scout that he has shipped cavalry as well, which is a, a good thing for us because our Chimu runners, they are going to destroy the, that cavalry. So what we're trying to do is just build up a, a small mass of bows. And that, that's all, all it's going to do is just try and take out the, the enemy uh, heavy infantry. That, that's really all it's, all it's doing. And hopefully get him to shift off heavy infantry. Now he is China. He's going to be making both heavy infantry and ranged infantry. He doesn't really have a choice about it. Uh, but the, the idea is that with the bows, we want to disincentivize our opponent from making heavy infantry. They they might think that, they're, that we're doing a switch. And so now the enemy begins to push in. We're really careful to micro, make sure that we, we're not losing our, our uh, bows at the front. Our Chimus are able to tank the cavalry. They're also able to tank the Changdaos. And we rotate some of our Chimus to the back lines. And our... Our bows have been able to clear out most of the infantry. There's a, there's a few that's left over. And from this point, we're just going to be spamming Chimu runners. That's all, all we need to do. Because now that the, the shipment from the British consulate has been finished, the only uh, heavy infantry that we're going to be up against is that those Changdaos. And they're really no match for the Chimu runners. The, these Chimu runners are, are fully upgraded Chimu runners. So they've got a huge amount of health, a huge amount of attack. And we just continue, we're shipping units. I think I will cancel these uh, these plumed spearmen uh, just simply because we're at a point where we can probably ship the uh, the Chimu upgrade. So he does a nice little Changdao pop here. But even, even though these units, the Changdao counter the Chimus, the Chimus are just so much stronger uh, than the Changdao's. In incredibly efficient units, the Chimus. Uh, the the most recent change that happened with the Chimus was that they were changed from costing wood to costing coin. Initially, my thought was this isn't a good change, but I actually think it's a great change. And the reason why is because you don't need to leave your base anymore. You can stay on your coin mines. So I, I've got 19 settlers right now. They're happily sitting in my base on the coin mines, not fast at all. I'm not out at trees. I don't have to be you know, chopping wood or, or making myself, because often if, when it comes to trees, your trees will be a lot further out than your coin mines. So it, I, I think it's overall, it's a good change. And so we begin ship, shipping that Chimu support in. The opponent makes a couple of errors here. Uh, send it, he was routing units to his forward base. We picked them up in the transition while they were moving back to base. Uh, we picked up three arc boosters and we've just picked up another uh, set. And so from this point, it's it's pretty much downhill for our opponent, just simply because he's China. He does have weak anti-cav. I think this is probably a bad matchup for China. Uh, I, I really don't know how you'd play into Chimu spam as China because he was doing all the right things. He was building Changdao. He was using the British consulate. He had British musks out. And at, at this point, we've just got a, a huge mass of Chimu. And from here, we can ship the two sound, town center cards so that, you know, if our attack here isn't successful, we're still able to fall back and, and boom. And so now with our Chimu mass, we're moving out and all we're seeking to do is idle the enemy. And if he's got an army, we're just looking to kill it. We built up a mass that's so strong at this point, unless he's going full anti-cav, he, he's going to have a real difficult time dealing with this. So he's shipped in uh, 10 arc boosters and he's got some British muskets from the consulate. But it's not going to be a match for our elite Chimu runners. We've got 28 attack, 217 health. They're they're just absolute beasts, and they don't even have the upgrade yet from the uh, from the war height, which gives them extra resistance. So they're they're incredibly strong units. And at, at this point, all, all we need to do is is really just mass Chimu, rally them in, and the opponent concedes. This strategy works well against civilizations that are going to be giving you at least eight minutes to be doing your thing. Because if you're hit early, you're going to be under a lot of pressure and it's going to be difficult for you to pivot. The deck that we've got is incredibly flexible. It means that we can play age two or play age three. If you're unsure about what cards to put in your deck, no matter the civilization, I encourage you to join our Discord server as you'll gain access to my deck picks where I've got decks for each civilization for land maps, water maps, one versus one, and team games. 
Other than that, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. This strategy is definitely a bit more of a funky one. It's difficult to pull off, but it's definitely rewarding when it does happen. Thank you for watching.